now move to blockchain and are pleased to be joined by Henri Arslanian, PwC's fintech and crypto leader in Asia. Henri, thanks for joining us today. Good to be with you. When we, Henri, when we talk uh, blockchain adoption, and we do a lot here, changing things from uh, healthcare, medical records to finance, um, is finance the sector where we should be looking for this technology to have the, the most uh, uh, quickly uh, developing applications? Absolutely, Daniel. As, as you know, there's a lot of interest in blockchain technology from a whole broad range of industries. For example, a recent PwC survey that we conducted with 600 executives from 15 countries showed that 84% of those companies are working on blockchain technology, although most of them are still at the R&D level. However, while there's a lot of good use, use cases in financial services, I mean, from you know trade finance to post-trade settlement, both processes that are very manual, headcount intensive, I have to argue that we're seeing a lot of development outside financial services uh, for example in areas like logistics um, uh, supply chain management or even the food and drug traceability you know because consumers want to know that their food and drugs are actually coming from where they say it comes and that's something that blockchain technology can maybe not so solve entirely but helps us uh, solve it in part uh, get get a, help us solve it partially mm -hmm. very helpful Henri and in terms of these benefits what's keeping us from uh, doing it all right now what are the the sort of bumps in the road on on the way to uh, blockchain application? No, it's a good question. You know, it's a bit ironic, uh, Daniel, because if you look at some of the features that make blockchain technology unique, you know, from the fact that it's consensus driven, it's distributed, uh, to even some of the features like traceability and immutability have actually become some of its obstacles when it comes to adoption of financial services. You know, as you know, banks have to comply with a whole range of requirements when it comes to customer uh, identification data. And the, for those cases, the use of a public blockchain uh, uh, is actually not ideal. When it comes to, for example, data privacy law, uh, with GDPR, for example, where customers have the right to be forgotten, again, using a, a blockchain with uh, immutability functions is uh, uh, also not ideal. Uh, this is why, actually, uh, you know, when you look at a lot of the banks, when they've been experimenting with blockchain technology, uh, they've been a lot of them using permission networks, uh, unlike permissionless networks like Bitcoin, where really they can choose who are the other participants on that blockchain and can decide what features they want to have on board as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Henri, that's a very interesting point. So this is one reason why, as you look at this graph, the cryptocurrency market's been so flat. Uh, there's a lot of hurdles, and uh, I've mentioned previously on this channel that we are awaiting news for regulators to become more clear. And then I can see more use of cryptocurrency and the prices starting to uh, switch from this bear market to a bull market. But for now, there's just not enough applications or use, and uh, we're going to remain in a crypto winner. Um, maybe for another year or two, but the rebound is coming and it really is just very similar to the internet where uh, it first needs to be regulated properly and used properly before its value can be realized. But let me know your thoughts on this and I will talk to you guys soon.